previously on the Tronage Channel. And today we're going to be talking about the Samguk Series Motors by DYS. And also, we're going to be doing a little bit of motor theory. Very basic stuff, but this way you guys can understand what do all these numbers and stuff mean on these motors. Stick around. Earlier in part one, motor theory. Parts. First, I really want to focus in on these Sam Glick series motors. I'm absolutely in love with them. They're only like 10 bucks a piece. You don't just need one, you need four. Some people like to fly a quad that feels very tight, very you, you boom, you hit the gas and you're off. Well, why don't I bring you in close? We'll unbox them and take a look at them, and while we're at it, we'll talk about some of the parts about these motors also. So that just And now, the compelling conclusion in part two. And this is where we begin the unboxing and review section of the video. All right, so on your left, my right, we have our Wii motor. It is the 2207, so it's 22 millimeters wide by seven millimeters tall. And it's a 2300 KV, which is the lower of the KVs in the Wii series. And we have a shoe motor, the 2306, so it's 23 millimeters wide by 6 millimeters tall. And it's a 2500 kV motor, which is the middle of the shoe series. This motor I have because I'm going to be specking this out for my budget build that's going to be coming very soon. This is what I'm going to be using in it. And it's going to be designed kind of for your entry level, for your beginner, but it's still going to grow with you. And it's going to basically get you through you know, all your learning stages. And we're going to be using the lower KV because I just like the way it feels to put a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier, a little bit more aggressive prop on a quad. So that's why we're going to go a little lower KV. This one, on the other hand, I have is I use these for my really like aggressive super when I want to just beat the heck out of uh, freestyle and racing kind of stuff because they just have so much punch to them. But it's a little it, you can get out of control a lot with those, but we'll get into that. So let's unbox these and take a look and we'll see what they look like. So let's do the Wii first. Comes in a little bag, little goodies, and there's a little story in here. So the, the naming of it comes, I don't remember the exact story, but some there's a whole story here if you wanna read where the, the Wii, the Woo, and the Shoe comes from. And it tells you a whole little little history and stuff like that, which is kind of cool that they include that. And there's like actual meaning behind the name naming of a product. I think that's pretty nifty. Um, you know, it's a nice little touch. So this one comes with the motor nut and some screws to anchor it onto your frame. It also comes with a couple spare uh, clips, little C clip action things to hold it in together. And we'll cover what those are in a moment. And then we have the motor itself, which I'll take out of its little baggie here. Okay. And there we have the Wii motor. And we'll put it there for now. And now let's take a look at the shoe. Same thing, has a little baggie of screws and a motor nut and uh, spare C-clips in there. And again, the motor nut matches the color of the bell because you see this is red, this one's blue because this is blue. And again, this also has a little, little story in it about, this one has the story about the shoe and what's, what's that all mean and stuff. So each one has their own little flyer in it that tells you about the woo, the wee, and the shoe. And now let's take this out of its bag so we can take a look at it. Okay, and there we go. There's the two motors. Let's just talk about these motors in general. For a budget motor to have a hollowed out motor shaft, see how there's a hole here? 
that reduces the weight of the motor, and it's usually something you only find in more expensive motors. So the fact that the Wii has these hollowed out shafts, that's kind of impressive in my book. Um, we have a, when you spin it by hand, it doesn't have a very coggy feel to it, but it does have a pretty smooth feel to it. If you have powerful magnets and you turn this motor and it feels very like coggy, like there's a notch, like dink, 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 that means that that motor is going to have a lot of power, but it also means it's not going to be a very smooth motor because it's obviously going to have to take a lot of energy to get that motor to turn off of that one magnet onto the next one. But because it takes a lot of power to move it off of that magnet to the next one means it will be a more powerful motor. Ones that are a little bit more smoother and less coggy doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be less power per se, but it may be a little bit more smoother and maybe a little bit more efficiency. Uh, and this one has a slight cogginess to it, but it's still pretty smooth feeling. If we turn it over, we can see that number one, it's an open bottom. There's no bottom to this uh, motor. And that's been a little bit of a controversy or, you know, a debate whether it's better to have a motor that's a sealed bottom, like the Racer Stars have a sealed bottom in a budget motor, or to have it exposed like this. And people say, well, the sealed bottom is better because it protects it and it keeps dirt from getting in there. And when you have an open one like this, all the dirt can get in. That's true. But also, if you have a, a motor that has the bottom part closed up and you do get mo dirt into it, it's also very, very hard to get the dirt out of it without taking it all apart. Here, because it's all open, you can eventually get that dirt to come out because it's easy to come in, easy to come out. Hard to get in, hard to get out. So what's nice about this is it's easy to get it out. What's also nice about the open bottom is that you can really see what's going on with your magnets. You can see how many magnets are in there. You can actually count them if you wanted to. to you know, if you're doing like I will be doing with thrust testing, you need to know how many poles a, a motor has. And the number of poles is really just you can count how many magnets there are and off you go. So this makes doing that very simple. Also here you have your little mounting holes. This is what you're going to be used to attaching it to your frame. And one thing of note, when you use... You know, whether you use these M3 screws or you use your own M3 screws, when you mount a motor and you screw it on, you don't want your screws going up into these metal windings. That would be a very bad thing. So when you put your screws in, it's okay if they come up a little bit, but they should not be touching anything up in the motor. You know what I'm saying? So as you put in your screws, if it starts going too far and you end up being like up in with the windings, pick a smaller screw or put a spacer or something in there because if you put a screw and it screws all the way up into these windings, you will short this out and it will be a bad, bad news. So just keep in mind when you're using uh, motor screws that they should only go, that won't fit through, they should only go enough so that they just peek out past that foot so that they're not up and touching these windings. And I mentioned before about a C-clip. That's what this thing is here. That's a C-clip. What that C-clip is doing is this is holding this shaft in place. This shaft is the motor shaft. So as I turn this, you see that middle part's turning while this, outside, this base stays stationary. And that's on a bearing. This part on the outside here is a bearing, and there's also a bearing up in uh, the top two, usually, depending on the motor. So... That's pretty much the parts of the motor. And another thing we can look at is we can also look at how the windings, these are the windings when I said how much copper is in a motor. So you can see these are the windings in here and how much copper is in them. And what you can look at is you can also look at like how neatly it looks and what kind of wire is used and things like that. And I would say these look really good. And Really, these motors are great performers, not just the, the Wii, but the whole uh, Samguk line. The only complaints that people have had, and I personally have not even experienced this, is just the quality assurance, that they'll either get a motor that when they the bearings might be wrong, or the bearing might be bad, or it may not, you know, it's just, it's not that the motor's bad, it's just they received a dud. And I've never experienced that, thankfully. Uh, but others have, and that's really the only thing that I've heard reports about. 
you know, being bad about these motors. Personally, I've never had a dud one yet, knock on wood. And, uh, and I'm loving them. So that's the Wii. Now let's take a look at the shoe we have over here. I mean, it's basically all the parts are going to be the same. So I'll give you a little shot of the bottom in case someone wants to see how many magnets there are or know how many poles there are or something along those lines. I'll give it a little turn here. Now the shoe one does feel a slight bit more coggy than the Wii does. But that's a little bit understandable because it is a little bit more of a powerful motor in my opinion. So it does have a little bit more coggy of a feel to it, but it's still pretty smooth. And now let's compare sizes. So you can see just visually looking at them, the shoe is a little bit bigger, which it's specced out to be. But if you look at the height, you can see that the Wii is a little bit taller, which it is. It's specced out to be that. Now, out of curiosity, this really doesn't mean anything, but let's just do a little check and see where we're at here. The Wii should be a 2207 motor. So let's see how we, if they're measuring outsides or insides. So here's our outside diameter, and we're at 27. So they're clearly measuring on the inside, not the outside. So let's take a measurement from the inside then. And this is another advantage of the bottom mount being open. We can see the inside. So we are, and there we go. So we're at 22.6, I'm sure it's right around 22. So they're measuring the inside of the motor. And let's do the same for the shoe. Let's measure from the edge of that one to the edge of that one. And we're at 23.38. So they are measuring on the inside of their bell and the their meeting spec. Now I'm sure you're gonna to wanna to know weights on these. So let's uh, move these out of the way for now. Let's bring the scale out. Okay, so the Wii motor, 35 grams, and we'll throw on the pack because you're gonna have the mounting screws, you're gonna have the motor washer on there, you're gonna have all that on there too, so let's throw that on. We're at 38 grams. And for the shoe, with its little pack of goodies, we're at 38 grams. So as far as weight goes, they weigh about the same. And that makes sense that they kind of weigh the same because it's where you're gonna put that copper. This one got bigger, but it's only six millimeters tall. This one is smaller, but seven millimeters tall. So here's the best way to put how this is going to, how these two motors compare to each other. Like we said earlier in the very beginning where you're using a wrench to do a bolt and the bolt is stuck. Because this is a wider bell on this motor, it's gonna be more torquey. So this is like you're using a wrench with a longer arm. This one, because it's shorter, it's gonna be less. So this would be like you're using a wrench with a shorter arm, but because it's taller, you got your friend who's stronger to push it. And that's kind of the difference between these two. This one's using mechanical advantage to get the torque. This one's using the, the copper in it to get the torque. And that's how they kind of will act accordingly. So we got our weights. We talked about all the different parts on them. Let's also talk about these wires that come off of them. They're nice and long, which is a really nice touch. They are, you know, pretty darn good. They are 18 gauge wire. And I mean, they're pretty standard. I mean, it's not, you know, I, there's some motors I've worked with that have like really ugly wire on this. This has that, that flexible silicone -y feel to it. It doesn't have like that just gross, ugly, stiff wire feel to it. So these will be good if you're doing like a four in one ESC and you need to route it around or whatnot. Like let's say you're using the, uh, the uh, Oh My God Remix frame and it has to come out and then it goes around and then it goes underneath and then it, you know, you have a nice long wire to work with and it's very flexible to bend it around. Or if you're just gonna be using, you know, a standard uh, traditional setup where your ESCs are on the motor arms, then you just, you know, cut <laughs> and you're going to attach it as such. But ultimately, um, I've, Never been so impressed by a motor before. I, I feel like, you know, I've used some of the other budget ones before and they just didn't perform to what you thought they would. These perform and they don't leave you feeling like you want more. They give you everything you want. Now, granted, like I said, these are $10 motors. 
do not expect the performance or the quality that you would get out of like a $25 motor. But for 10 bucks, they really, they are worth every penny of that $10 and a little bit more, I think. Plus it just, the, the quality on them just looks so nice, I think, that they just, I know other people may complain about the quality, but I mean, I don't know. They just have, they just, they just feel solid. There's no, like the, there's no vertical movement at all. It's nice and tight. I feel nothing moving at all on either of these. It's a very tight, there's no slop in it. It just spins. It's got a good spin to it. It's very smooth and on a, a craft, these things rock. All right, so that's why I love these motors. These Samic motors, since they've come out, I've been using them on all my builds since then. I was using those Racer Star ones and they just always, the Racer Stars just always made me feel a little like, oh man, it's just, doesn't have that oomph that you want it to based on its specs. It specked out like it's gonna do that, but then it's just kind of like, yeah. That's kind of how the Racer Stars were doing for a budget motor. These motors are not much more expensive than the Racer Star ones. They're a little bit more expensive, but not much. And they perform like night and day. Like I haven't, I've moved on from Racer Star and haven't even looked back. Now I'm looking at these motors. These are my favorite motors. They're the motors I use on all my builds. The Wii motor, this is actually gonna be the motor that I'm gonna be putting on my uh, budget build video uh, because it is, for what you get and the price, it is phenomenal. Now, the links to these motors will all be down in the description below if you wanna go check them out. I appreciate if you use the links, they are affiliate links, and it helps support the channel if you purchase it, you know, you know, and just clicking the link, even if you purchase something else, I just appreciate that because I also get credit for that too. Um, but I really recommend you go check out these motors. And while you're down there, why don't you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already? Maybe even hit that bell so you can get notifications about my videos when they're posted and you can keep up with the latest and greatest. It just helps finding my videos a little bit easier and it's free. You don't have to pay anything to subscribe to my channel. It's just basically you're in the know and when I post new videos, new content, you're let know that that's coming out and coming to you. But I hope you learned something today basically about the different numbers that are on these motors. I hope that was kind of helpful for helping you choose a motor, whether it be these, the Sam Cooke series motors or just any motor in general. I hope I kind of helped explain what those numbers mean and what you're looking for when choosing a motor and prop combination per se. And like I mentioned, there will be uh, future videos coming out that I'm gonna be going pretty in depth with testing different motor and prop combinations to give you kind of real world, not manufacturer specs, because manufacturers, let's be honest, they might lie, they may fudge the truth a little, they may bend the numbers and the figures to make it look like it's better than it really is. But you know, when you have someone who's just running a test and giving you data, I feel like that's a little bit more reliable and gives you a little bit more real world uh, information of what to expect. So I hope that was able to help you and I will be doing that soon and in the future. So as always, my name is Tronage. Fly strong.